Welcome back. Today we're going to talk about three reasons why the odds of a Federal Reserve interest rate cut just dropped by over 10 points. We can see the red bars represent the five to five and a quarter range. That would represent a federal cut in interest rates uh, in the March meeting. The green bars represent a five and a quarter to five and a half percent range where the Federal Reserve would keep rates unchanged. Well, in the past day, the odds of a Fed cut dropped from 77 to 63 percent. The odds the Federal Reserve would keep rates unchanged rose from 19 to 35 percent. And we can see, again, currently 63% chance the Federal Reserve will cut interest rates. This is the lowest level we've seen more or less since the beginning of the year. Number one, strong retail sales. Reported on MarketWatch, retail sales jump in December. Good holiday shopping season shows signs of strength in the U.S. economy. Retail sales on a year-over-year -year basis up 4.8%. This is the highest level we've seen going back to January of last year. Certainly a great number. Now, on a month-over-month -month basis, there were certain sectors that certainly did improve. Uh, sectors that we should make note of include motor vehicles up 1.1% on a monthly basis. Also, non-store retailers, that means internet sales, up 1.5%. But more significantly, on a year-over-year -year basis, motor vehicle sales up 10.3%. Non-store retailers, internet sales, up 97 And then electronics and appliances up 10.7%. Now, on a year-over-year -year basis, we can see the different sectors within the uh, retail sales number. Number one, non-retailers, uh, non non-retailers, non-store retailers. That's the blue line, that's internet sales. It's the strongest sector right now. We also have electronics and appliances, also one of the strongest sectors, certainly trending to the upside. And as well, motor vehicle sales, that's the yellow line. These represent the top three sectors. We can also take a look at gas stations down 6.6% as well as building materials down 2.3%. Those represent the weakest sectors within the retail sales on a year-over-year -year basis. And we can see here, for example, building materials, that's the green line, that's second to the bottom, and then of course the red line, gas stations. Those are the weaker sectors within retail sales. But in terms of retail sales, comparing that to the S&P 500, that's going back a couple of years. The S&P 500 is shown here in white. Now, currently, retail sales, again, up 4.8%. Notice something very interesting. The S&P 500 hit a bottom in mid-22 and then took off to the upside. Retail sales did not hit a bottom until late 22, early 23. In this case, the stock market really is acting as a leading indicator, anticipating the strong retail sales we have now. Now we can see here retail sales again on a year-over-year -year basis. Compare that to the white line. That's interest rates, the Federal Reserve interest rates. Now, in particular, go back a couple of years this uh, shows that retail sales at the time were only up 2.6%. And what did the Federal Reserve do? They cut interest rates. It's important to know we were below 3% year-over-year basis uh, growth in retail sales, and that's why the Federal Reserve cut interest rates. Why is that important? Well, we're right now at 4.8%, significantly higher. So we'd ask you, are Fed cuts needed with such strong retail sales? Second reason, Fed officials are taking it slow. This from the other day, Fed's Christopher Waller advocates moving carefully with rate cuts. Federal Reserve Governor Christopher Waller acknowledged Tuesday that interest rate cuts are likely this year, but said the central bank can take its time relaxing monetary policy. He said in part, when the time is right to begin lowering interest rates, I believe it can and should be lowered methodically and carefully. He also said, in many previous cycles, the FOMC cut rates reactively and did so quickly and often by large amounts. This cycle, however, I see no reason to move as quickly or cut rates as rapidly as in the past. They want to go slower this time. Well, the Fed Fund's futures are listening. 
Third reason, and this is not something that really is very obvious, but if we look uh, between the lines, falling energy prices really help stimulate economic growth. We'll take a look at oil going back to September of last year. We were almost at $95 a barrel for crude oil. We're currently just in the low 70s. Lower oil prices help stimulate the economy. The Federal Reserve watches oil prices. They may be thinking, well, if oil prices have come down so much, maybe we don't need to move that fast. Maybe low oil prices are helping us along the way. Now, in terms of oil prices, these different lines represent the different ETFs represented in the S&P 500. In particular, XES, XLE, XOP. What are they? The oil and gas equipment and services, energy sector, oil and gas exploration and production, the three weakest sectors within the S&P 500, illustrated by their own ETFs, are all related to oil and gas and energy, certainly flying in the face of what otherwise looks to be, over the long term, a strong stock market. Why is all this so important? Well, the white line represents the S&P 500. This goes back to the beginning of the year. The histograms show us the odds in the March meeting, the Federal Reserve will cut interest rates. Notice the very strong correlation. When the odds of a cut go down as they did in the beginning of the year, S&P 500 went down. When the odds of an interest rate cut went up, the S&P 500 went up. Well, now, as of today, the odds have dropped over 10 points that the Federal Reserve will cut interest rates. So we should be very aware of this. It could, or at least it has in the past, past translated into weak stock prices. Will history repeat itself? Well, only time will tell. The question, and we'd ask you to you know, comment in, how aggressive should the Fed cut interest rates? Do you think they should cut in March? Do you think they should delay until the next meeting six weeks after that? Or should they cut sooner? We have a 63% chance of a Fed cut. Do you think that's appropriate? If you haven't already, please visit our brand new Substack newsletter, Just the Data. Our current publication, The Inverted Bond Market, where are we now? We take a look at the history of inverted bond markets. How long did they last? How did the stock market behave during those inverted bond markets? And what happened afterwards? Just simply go to substack.com, free uh, to join, uh, no registration necessary, and just simply search for us, Just the Data. As well, please visit our Twitter page. We update on a daily basis, Just the Data. We hope this has been helpful. We look forward to seeing you back soon.